In this video, you'll learn how to create a user interface for your game, including anchoring elements, animation, button clicks, and more. Let's go. All right, let's build this UI. So I have included these UI assets, uh, link in the description, uh, just some things that I drew to for this tutorial. Uh, you can use these or you can follow along with your own stuff. So to get started, I'm just going to uh, just set up my scene a bit. I'm gonna change my camera from skybox to solid color and maybe use a nice little blue like that. Okay, so to create UI elements, right click in your hierarchy UI and you'll see canvas here. Now everything in the UI has to be placed on a canvas. Uh, but if you just create any other UI object here, for example, image, it will scaffold that uh, canvas out for you and then put the image as a child of the canvas. Uh, this event system is used to uh, capture the events on the actual canvas. You can completely ignore it. Uh, and actually, I might just put it in a little object here just to get it out of the way. Um, I usually just create a setup ob object and place these inside of it. So I'll just put that there and we can just worry about the canvas. So you can click on your little image here and move it around. And you'll notice by default, Unity selects this Rect tool here. So this is the tool that we use to manipulate the canvas. And you'll notice we've got these anchor points here that you can grab and pull around. Uh, if you hold Alt, you can mirror the action. And if you hold Shift, you can uh, adhere to the aspect ratio. Um, and if you hold both, then you can mirror while adhering to the aspect ratio, just like that. Now, if we want this to maybe just stay at the top here, and we don't care what size their screen is, what aspect ratio they are, we just want it always to be there. If we, for example, go to free aspect here, just so I can show you different aspect ratios, you'll see that it doesn't actually adhere to what we want it to do. See, and that's because we're not anchoring it. So I'm gonna change this back to 1080p. So selecting my image, if I go up here, and click this, and as you'll notice, these images and everything on the canvas, in fact, has a rect transform, as opposed to a normal game object, which is a transform. So a rect transform gives us access to a, quite a few uh, more uh, little utilities, most notably this one here. So if you click this, you, this is setting your anchor. Okay, so if you click here, you'll notice this little, uh, this little icon here goes to the top. And now if we go to free aspect, you'll see that it sticks to the top of the screen just like that. All right, so I'll head back to 1080p. Now, uh, if you come back in here, you'll see here, if you hold shift, you can set the shapes pivot. So not only am I setting the anchor now, I'm also setting the pivot of the shape. So now if we rotated this shape in a script, for example, it would actually rotate around the anchor point like that. If we hold Alt, we can also set the position of our shape directly. Okay, so I'm, I generally just hold Shift and Alt and I put it where I want it because nine times out of 10, I don't care where the pivot point is. Um, and so I just chuck it all in the same place. All right, so that will, that will always, adhere to exactly uh, the top right, top left of the screen. In addition, we can stretch our object to be the full height or the full width or both. So for example, like that, it will always, regardless of the aspect ratio, it will always go across the full length of the screen. Um, alternatively, we can do that and it will always be horizontal, uh, vertically. Um, and lastly, if we click this one, it will always take up the full screen regardless of the aspect ratio, as you can see. So let's uh, change it back to 1080p. Now let's actually add our first uh, real object that we're gonna be using. So clicking on the image here, and I'm gonna go to my UI assets and sprites. And now you'll notice I can't actually drag my sprites onto here. And that's because uh, they were imported as texture type default. Now, if you're using a 2D project, these will import as the correct uh, type. But if you see here, we need them to be sprite 2D and UI. So I'm just gonna highlight all of my sprites here and excluding my font and click sprite 2D and UI, and then just click apply. And now I should be able to click my image 
and then pull my panel out onto it like that. That doesn't look too good. So uh, as soon as you set a image, it will just, it will stay to the current aspect ratio that you have got here. Uh, so if you just click set native size, it will go to this actual specific objects uh, proper size. And we can just scale that up and down like that. But what you'll notice is if I try to drag this now, it actually uh, stretches all of it. Now that's not really ideal. What, what we'd truly like is that these stay true to their uh, proper size. And then these panels here, these wood panels all stretch. So we can easily do that by going, by clicking on the panel and clicking our Sprite editor. Now, if it says Sprite Manager isn't installed, you can go to Windows Package Manager and make sure Unity Registry is selected and just install the 2D Sprite package there by just clicking the Install button down here. Once it's installed, you can click it and go to Sprite Editor and you'll get this window. Now, you can just drag these in to where you would... So basically, we're saying everything in this area here, we don't want it to stretch but everything within these bounds, we don't care if it stretches. So that's not really scientific. You might wanna like uh, uh, get perfect values here, but does not matter. So I'm just gonna click apply. And now let's just set native size again on this. And now if we try to scale this, you'll see that it still uh, stretches because we need to change image type to sliced. And there you'll see that it actually works as expected. Now this is uh, really big and fat, so I'm just gonna downscale down it to about 0.5. And there we go, perfect. So I'm gonna pin this to the center of the screen, just like that. So if you remember, hold Alt Shift and just click the center one, and it will set not only the pivot, but also the anchor. And maybe scale that down a little bit and scale it, pull it down, cool. So let's call that panel, just so we don't get confused. Now, another important aspect of UI is text. So I'll show you how to do this in two separate ways. So right click your canvas and go UI and simply click text. Now this is the built-in uh, Unity text, which has been around since the beginning of the UI system. And if you come over here, you'll see you've got, you know, your alignments, you've got your color, and you can change the text here, hello. Uh, but you'll see that it's not very clear. Now there's a few ways to fix this. For example, you can up your text size really high. You can give it enough room and then you can actually scale it down. Seems a little bit hacky, I know, uh, but that is how you get clear text uh, using the default text input. But there is a better way. And that is by using UI, Text Mesh Pro. Now this used to be a package that this uh, one guy used to maintain, but then Unity's like, hey, our text sucks. So let's just actually buy uh, this from this guy. And they integrated it into Unity itself. So now you can just click text. And if you haven't got it installed, you'll see this little prompt come up and import Text Mesh Pro Essentials. And there we go. And now as you can see straight out of the box, it's crystal clear. Now, the good thing about uh, TextMesh Pro is you can create your own font assets uh, by simply using an OTF file, just like this. So I just I just downloaded this one from uh, Google Fonts. So I included it in there just for the simplicity of this tutorial. So you can go to Window, TextMesh Pro, Font Asset Creator, and it's already detected that I wanna use, try to make an asset from this font, otherwise you can just click it and select your other OTF. Default settings are fine for the rest of this. Generate Font Atlas. Let's save it. Uh, let's just save it right in the root right there. And there we go, so we've got this file right here. Now if we click on our text, we can simply drag our new font asset over that default one. And now we've got this new font in, in Unity. So, in the same way as the traditional font had, we've got our alignment here. So I'm just gonna center it. Let's just get a bit more room here. And again, if you hold Alt, you can mirror the uh, expansion. Now let's change the text here. Let's say, uh, building a UI. Now the beautiful thing about TextMesh Pro, oops, is that it gives us access to all this uh, additional stuff that the normal traditional Unity text does not. 
For example, we can add a outline like that. Let's just make it maybe that. And we can add an underlay, which is basically, if you use Photoshop, it's just like a drop shadow. So let's just offset that a little bit like that. And there we go, just got some basic text. You can do a lot more with it. Uh, playing with these settings, you can get some pretty awesome results. But that is as far as I'm gonna get into Text Mesh Pro for now. So let's just leave that there. Next, let's add a little button here. So right click on the panel. Now traditionally, you can go down to UI and actually select this button here. And that will give you this object, which has got this button component here, which also gives you access to this on click. But this normal button uh, also puts this text here. Now that may not be what, what you want. I just wanna use my own image for a button. So I'm just gonna add a normal image like that. Let's call this play button. And I'm going to drag my button image onto it. And as you can see, it's already got text, which is why I didn't need the text. Now I'm gonna set native size to make it the correct aspect ratio, then just uh, zoom it down a little bit like that. Now I can actually add that button component onto it. Now, if you press play, Ah, so it's very little, which I'll get into in a moment. But as you can see, with that button component, you'll see that Unity by default adds some uh, click events to it so that it's, it's changing color, like it's kind of actually being clicked. All right, so this is not really what we're expecting, is it? So if you look at our canvas, we're pretty much trying to take up the entire room here. But when you press play, it's just this tiny little area. Now that's because if you click on your canvas, you'll see this canvas scalar component and it's set to constant pixel size. What we actually want is to scale with screen size. Now, if you press play, you'll see that it's taking up exactly what we wanted. That's, that's a, exactly what we see in this uh, canvas rect here. Cool, so now it would be cool if we can click this button and it change from this sprite here to this sprite, like it's actually being pressed. So let's make a little script here. Let's call this uh, clicky button, like that, and open it up. Okay, so we're gonna be needing a few things here. Using Unity Engine, whoops, dot event systems, and using Unity Engine UI. Cool, so, when you're just using a game object with a collider, you can just hook into the void on mouse down, just like that. But Unity UI doesn't have this by default, uh, but we can use something in Unity Engine event systems. So if you just go to after your mono behavior and start using the on pointer down handler and the I on pointer up handler, and then you click on one, you can just press Alt Enter, Implement Interface, Alt Enter, Implement Interface. And now these are effectively the same thing as on mouse down and on mouse up, all right? Now I'm not going to write the rest of the code here live. I'm just gonna copy and paste it and then we'll go through it. Okay, so we've got a reference to our image, the actual button image. Uh, we've got a sprite for the default state and then when it's pressed, audio clips for when it's compressed and uncompressed and the source that we're playing the clip from. On our unpointed down, we're just setting it to the pressed image and playing the compressed clip and vice versa on the pointer up. Okay, back to Unity. On our play button, let's add our script that we just made, clicky button, and start setting our references. So we've got our image there, our default button, our compressed button, our compressed clip, which is in audio, our uncompressed clip, and we need a source. There we go. Let's try that. Beautiful. Not a very nice sound, but it is what it is. Okay, so what if you wanna actually hook up an event to that? Well, we can easily add a function. I was clicked. Uh, typing debug log and let's just say clicked like that save it and go back into unity and on our play button you can go to your button component here and the on click just add an event let's send in our clicky button and on our clicky button down here I was clicked and now we should be able to click it and get an event down the bottom there. Called bananas. Okay, 
Next, let's add that uh, scrolling background effect. And if you need a full tutorial for this scrolling background, I will include a link up there somewhere. Uh, so click that and then come back. So what I'm gonna do here, instead of adding an image, I'm going to add a UI raw image. Now the difference between an image and a raw image is the raw image gives us access to the UV rect and a few other things, but what we care about right now is the UV rect. So let's name this scrolling background and I'm going to scale it way up like that. Now for the image, let's, I've got this tarot dev image here and you'll see I've set it up in kind of like a funny way. So just drag that on there. Now, the reason I've got it set up like this is so that we can tile it. So if you go to your UV rect and start um, doing the X here, aha, uh -huh. so it's it's not actually tiling, it's clamping. So we need to change that. Go to the Taradev sprite and you'll see down here, wrap mode is set to clamp. If you change that to repeat, and then let's go back to our scrolling background again, you'll see that you can actually tile it like that. So I'm going to set the width to something like 15 and the height to 15 as well. And then let's rotate it a bit like that. That might be too many octopods or octopus or uh, octopuses or apparently they're all correct. So let's uh, change the color a bit, go down to maybe like that and if you've used sprite renderers before, you'll know that they've got the uh, auto layer property and depending on the auto layer, they'll render in front of each other or not. With UI, it's a lot more simple than that. It's just hierarchical. So if I just grab this and then put it behind the panel, you'll see that now it is in the correct place behind the panel. Very, very easy. All right. So to make this start scrolling, I have included this script here. As I said earlier, if you actually wanna see how this works, just go to the tutorial that I linked earlier. So I'm just gonna flop that on there. Let's put in the raw image and let's make this go at maybe 0.2 and 0.2. Press play. And that's pretty damn fast. Let's make that 0.1 and press play. Yeah, pretty cool. Cool enough anyway. Okay, so lastly, I want to add a little uh, little menu here that you can click and it will slide out with the icons that you need. And then if you click it again, it will slide back in. So let's quickly do that. So I'm going to create a new empty game object here. And when you create an empty game object on a canvas element, it will actually create the rec transform type. Uh, so let's call this settings panel and let's clamp this to the top left. So I'm holding shift and alt here and just clicking on the top left one and it will clamp it up here. All right, so up here, let's add a item. Let's make this an image. I'm going to call this open and I'm gonna make it my gear icon. Like that, set native size just to make sure that it's the correct aspect ratio. And scroll that down a bit like that. And let's actually pull this down a bit the uh, settings panel, who knows how, how big it's gonna be. Put that right there. Okay, so I'm gonna make some more icons here. And this one I'm going to call audio and let's put the audio icon in. And then let's make another copy down here. Let's call this uh, vibrate. And I'll make the vibrate icon. And we want these to actually be starting off screen, don't we? Because we want them to come in when we click it. There are a few ways to get these moving. You can do it in script and just like lurk the positions when you need to. I personally like to do this via animations. Uh, it's the perfect thing to animate, to be honest. So I'm going to add, I'm going to sit, click on my settings panel and add an animator. And then I've got my uh, animation tabs down here. If you don't have them, go to window animation and then just click these and then just dock them. So in my animation with my settings panel clicked, I'm going to click create. Now let's create a little folder here called animations. Press save. And actually I probably should have named it something better. So let's show uh, settings. That's what my animation is called. And now I'm going to click record on my, on my animator. 
and we're going to animate these inwards. So let's start with the audio. So if we just move forward to say 20 and then pull this in, whoops, and then pull this across, let's like overextend it a little bit. You'll see because uh, we're in the chart a little bit, basically it's taking our first position and it's automatically adding a keyframe for us. And then we're adding the keyframe where we actually manually added it. And then let's go ahead another five and then pull it to the actual real destination. So now if you grab this, you can see like, it's kind of like doing a little bit of a, an over an overextend effect. Uh, you can do that with like lerps and stuff in, in, uh, in code, uh, but that, that's an easy way to do it with, with animation. Next, let's do it with our uh, vibration. So let's just actually take a note of where this is, the overextend amount. And then with our vibrate, so let's actually stagger the animation of these two. So it looks like they're kind of uh, coming down in sequence. So if we start this at maybe five, so we need to keyframe here so that this doesn't, uh, so that the, the movement starts here and not here. So if you just go to five and then right click here on pause X, you can add a key, just add the key there. And then we need to actually find out the overextended amount. So I'm going to go to the point where my audio is all the way out, grab its X position, go back to my uh, vibration. Now this is staggered by five. So this is where it's gonna be overextending. So just copy that in there, go forward another five and then go back to its actual spot. And let's try that out. There we go. Cool little wavy effect. That's all we really need to do for that. So stop recording. Now on our animator, we have this animation. And let's just actually name that properly, show settings. But we don't wanna be doing that the moment it comes in. We don't wanna show it straight away. So let's actually create a empty state. And let's just call this starts. And let's make this the default state, set as default state. And now we want to actually transition to this, uh, when we when we click this button, we actually want to transition to it. And we'll need a parameter here so that whenever this parameter is triggered, we'll actually perform this action. So in parameters here, you, it's probably default selected to layers, click parameters, and let's create a trigger. And let's call this show. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't we create a Boolean and like only show it when it's being shown? And I'll show you why I chose a trigger in just a moment. So, so here in the conditions, we need to tell it, when do we actually want to transition from start to show settings? And we've only got one, one trigger here. So as soon as you click that, it will have the condition there. And untick has exit time. So it transitions the second we press it. And now that we're here, we actually need to uh, transition back, don't we? Once we once we press the button again, so we can actually use this same animation. So copy and paste it, and let's call this one hide settings. Now instead of speed one, we can just set this to speed minus one, and it will do the reverse. So let's set the transition here. So make transition. This one will also be trigger. Okay, and remove the exit time. And then from here, we can just go straight back to start and then we can just wait for the for the input again. So now we actually need to uh, make this button clickable. So let's add a button here. You'll see this on click uh, handler. So you add one and throw in the setting panels animator. Now I told you why we chose a trigger and not a Boolean. And that is because these uh, on click events can only handle functions with a single parameter and booleans require two because they require you to say okay what's the name of the boolean and then the value of the boolean whereas trigger is just like a bam i just triggered something i don't care what it is it's just a trigger so we can actually use set trigger because all the all you need for that is the name of it which we call show so whenever we click this we're going to set the trigger show so let's try that let's press play and go aha uh -huh. so that's because on our animation we have got loop time clicked so press play again let's try and there we go in and out so then you would simply just make buttons of this and you'd connect your settings manager or whatever and it would just toggle on the sound or, or vibration uh easy as that uh one last thing let's uh add some decoration to this panel 
So I've got this panel here and I would like some decoration down here and maybe up here or something. So let's add a UI image and let's add this plant deco here. Set native size so it uh, reforms to its own uh, aspect ratio. And now I always want this to be right here. And if we grab our panel and start moving it around, you'll see it does not do what we want. So that's where we need to use the anchor point. So holding shift and alt, click the bottom one like this, then put it where you want it. And you'll see now when we move the panel around, it sticks exactly where we want it. So let's call that a plant. Let's duplicate it. And I'm gonna use the gear that I drew like that. And for that one, I want it in the top left like that for that one gear. So cool, that's about all I wanted to show you. You've, you've learned how to make a little uh, animated menu here with your buttons. You've learned some Text Mesh Pro. You've learned a little button here with event handlers and you've learned how to uh, have scalable graphics as well as anchoring your graphics to the correct locations on the screen. And that, that's really the basics. Now that you know that, uh, you can start making pretty complex UIs. If you wanna know more about like things like sliders or uh, layout groups and stuff, which are the more complex things of the UI, I've got videos on that, so go check those out. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you later.